Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be focusing on the functionality for our shop. Now in the last few videos we've been working on the interface, getting it to open and close and also how we can set up the blueprint which, it, which contains all of the graphical information and it's finally time to make that piece of wood that we've got in our store go into our inventory when you click on it, take away some of the coins and all of that good stuff. So one thing that I do want to mention before we go any further is that the coins are specific to each of the characters that you've got and also your inventory is within the third person game mode so there's going to be a lot of jumping between blueprints so just sort of sit back, hold on tight and I'll try and take things as slow as I can for you guys. So, most of the blueprints that we're going to be writing in today's episode are going to be within the shop interface widget. And this is all going to be fired off when the player clicks that button to try and purchase this wood. Now, for whatever reason, as of right now, I've currently got that wood as an image and we can't turn it into a on-click event. So I just need to click that image that I've got here, delete it and simply replace it with a button. For the style for the normal, just type in wood logs to get the image that we had before and set your margin to zero and then you just want to replace it exactly where it was before. And now with this, what you want to do then is scroll all the way down and create an on-clicked event. And what this is going to do is basically give you an event that's going to fire off whenever you click that button to try and purchase some of those woods, uh, some of that wood. Now, you're going to be creating these events for each one of your items that you're going to have in the shop, just changing the code ever so slightly to change um, the item that you're trying to put into your inventory, the cost, and all of that good stuff. But for now, let's just go ahead and get into the nitty gritty and get started. So the first thing that you want to do is with this, you want to check to see which character the player is currently using so you can get that currency, the amount of coins the player currently has. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use switch on int and with this I'm going to make two pins, zero and one. Now the reason why I've made two pins is because we've got two characters, there's two different currency variables that we might want to access. Now this information for which character is currently selected is within the third person game mode. So what you want to do just before you switch on int, just cast to the third person game mode. And then as the game mode, you want to get a variable called class selected. And then within this, if you remember from the previous videos, uh, the zero is our magic character and then one is our sword based character. Now with the object wildcard for this game mode, just type in get game mode, just like that. And then from here, what we're gonna do is do a couple of things. So before the player can purchase anything, we need to see whether or not they've got enough coins and those coins are stored within that specific character. So what I'm gonna do is for um, the first track, which is going to be zero, which is our magic base character, is I'm going to cast to that magic character first of all. And then as magic character, you want to get the currency, which is the number of coins they've got at the moment. For the object wildcard, just simply type in get player character. Now, what we're going to do from here is simply run a check to see whether or not the player has enough coins to make the purchase and then we're going to see if they've got enough inventory space and if they do we are going to add it into their inventory and take away some coins. So in the design view at the moment you can see the current cost of that item is 12 coins. So what we need to do is run a check to see whether or not currency is greater than or equal to 12. So what we're going to do is run a little branch from cast to magic character and then with this we are going to do integer greater than or equal to and then just hook up the a to your currency and your b just type in 12 and what i'm going to do is quickly select this and press c to comment it so i know exactly what this is so you guys can easily find out later on 
that this is simply just the cost of your item and if you ever want to change that you just change this number here it's that straightforward now if it's false and they don't have enough coins what I'm going to tell it to do just for now is simply print a string that says um, go get some more money and then if it's true what I'm going to do is we are going to check to see whether or not it has enough inventory space and then if it does we're going to put it in there now before I do that, what I'm going to do is print a string for true just to say you can purchase this just to check to see whether or not the currency based system is working. So I'm going to compile it with everything looking like this. Remember that I'm working with a magic character. So when I close this, go into the game, I'm going to select the magic character. As of right now, I've got no coins. So what I'm going to have to do is just quickly sort of kill one of my enemies here so I'm just gonna keep on shooting him until he dies ignore the items that are in my inventory at the moment that's just something that I picked up sort of over time run over this okay I got three coins that's fine let's get some more because I do need 12 of these but we ain't really got time for that at the minute so what it should do at the moment is when I click it it should say go get some more money so let's go and get some more money by just quickly killing one of our enemies. Now, as of right now, I just don't have enough mana to keep killing these. Our sort of magic character just isn't powerful enough at the moment. But the main thing is that I can see is that I don't have enough coins, so it's telling me to go get some more. So I know that part is working. Now, what I am gonna do real quick is I have a bunch of pickups on the floor that keep going into my inventory um, for the wood and for the keys as well, I just keep running over those. So I'm just going to delete those for now and just make sure those aren't going in there anymore, which is perfect. So what we're gonna do now that we know that the currency system is working and we know that you know the coins are right, we can keep working on our code. Now what you will have noticed a moment ago is that our button was actually slightly offset. So just anchor that to the right hand side of the screen, just like we have done with the rest of the store. Now, as for checking to see whether or not the player has got enough inventory space, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our pickup items and actually just copy the code from the wood pickup. And within here, what we're going to do is we're just going to steal all of this code. And what it's essentially doing is casting to the third person game mode, which is where our inventory is, and then it's just checking to see whether or not there's space in any of the slots and then if there is what it's going to do is set it set that slot equal to what we're after so i'm going to copy all of this code and because this is the wood item the item id is exactly the same we're trying to purchase wood and this is trying to pick up wood so we don't need to change any of this but if you do want to change any of this you just want to change this number here inventory item free that is the item id for our wood at the moment but with all this code selected everything except the little um begin overlap bit of the top here we're just going to paste this in to our graph and just chuck it in here now what you're gonna have to do is just move this over and then just hook this up to you can purchase this so what this should do now is purchase this item for us now what we don't want it to do is destroy actor so after it's made the purchase we don't want it to do anything with that for now and then we're gonna keep this bag full pickup just to let them know that they can't purchase it but if it has made the purchase what we're going to tell it to do is take away some of those 12 coins from the character and the way we're going to do this is once again we are just going to um so as the magic character we are going to simply type in set currency and then we are just going to hook this up all the way over here and we are going to join this to each one of these slots. So after it's set the slot to the wood, so it's purchased the item, we are essentially gonna tell it to do integer minus integer, and the amount is gonna be 12, which is the cost of the item. 
So let's just drag and drop it all in there. And you should have something that looks a bit like this. And now with this, with the currency, what we're going to do is, like I said, integer minus integer. And then what we're going to do is from the magic character, get the currency again and then bring it all the way over here put this into the first value and just take away 12 from this and what this is going to do is just basically take away the coins from the player once they have got the item and what this should do now is this should be pretty much set up exactly how we need it to but this is only going to be for the magic character so what i'm going to do is just move these bits back and down and basically just do the same thing for the sword based character so start off by simply casting to the sword underscore character and then set the object wildcard to get player character and then what I'm going to do is drag this down actually I'm not going to drag it down I'm just going to leave it there and then from there what we're going to do is just copy all of this code that we've got here so copy and paste and just drop it in to there now the target for this for the currency we're just going to get this from the sword character so get currency and hook this up so replace the reference that we had from before we want to chuck this in here as well and the other currency reference for this is all the way over here so we might have to delete this and we're also going to have to delete this and what we're going to have to do is simply set sorry as the character rather so get this so as sword character get currency and we also need to set currency so the set currency is going to allow us to take away those coins from the player and we're going to put this over here with the new amount going in there and then for each of these little links hook this up into your set node keep going keep going until each and every one of these are all full and set up now once you guys have done this for one item it's going to be a lot easier because essentially you're just going to be copying and pasting all of your code that you've got and then just changing the cost and the item id that you're putting in here once that's set up it's really easy and then lastly get your currency drag this over and just hook this up to your a for your set currency so now after it's set the item, it's put it in the player's inventory. It's going to take away 12, and that is it. So if we compile, and then let's go ahead and test this. So let's just use our warrior character. And then with this dude, I'm just going to keep on hitting him with the sword until I get enough coins to make the purchase that I need. And almost straight away there, I got 13 coins, which is going to be enough. If I go up to my store, click on the button for the wood, it's going to take away 12 coins that you saw, it went from 13 to 1, and it's put it in my inventory. If I click it again, it says go get some more money, and you can see essentially our store is working. Now there is a lot, a lot of code to this, um, but once you've done it once, like I said, it's going to become a lot easier because you're just changing the cost which is over here and then you've also got your item ids um, so for your words your keys whatever you're trying to purchase you just put it in there now there's one last thing that i wanted to do before i ended the episode which was to simply just fill the hovered and the pressed as well with the wood logs image and the only difference that we're going to do for the pressed one is sorry the hovered one is we're just going to make this slightly darker still going to be the same image mind so that the player can see that they are clicking it it's something that they can purchase um, so with the tint we are just going to make this a slightly different color so give it a little bit of dark blue on top there just like that so now if we compile this press play 
open up our warrior character, any character really, we can run up to this store, hover over that item in the stop shop and you can see that is now a clickable item. And that is pretty much everything that I wanted to do for the store. You guys can add in loads more items, it is entirely up to you. If you guys are having some trouble with getting all of your code to work and everything up to this point, if you want access to the completed project files, that is something that you can get access to via Patreon. But for now, that is pretty much everything that I wanted to do in this video. Once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.